Hello, folks, and welcome back to the show that lets artistic endeavors don suits of armor and duke it out for artistic supremacy. Today on the show, it's a royal, righteous, rich guy wrestle fest between Batman and Iron Man. Both accomplished crime fighters with wonderful toys, but only one can be crowned the best of the billionaire badasses. Tony Stark, a jet-setting playboy who went from manufacturing weapons to battling against them, versus Bruce Wayne, the ultimate trust fund kid who grew up to be more than a man, but a symbol. The stakes are high, as the winner gets to spike Superman's alcohol spritzer with kryptonite. I love it! Here's how we'll get there. Round one, box office. Round two, tomato meter slash audience score. Round three, competition. And then we'll do a wild card round that Bruce Wayne hopes doesn't involve cool facial hair. Hey, both these guys have great butlers, tons of money, and can stay up as late as they want. Let's get it on. What are your superpowers again? Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. I'm rich. Round one, box office. Who amongst us hasn't seen a Batman or an Iron Man in a movie theater? It's not a question of if you've seen one, it's simply a matter of which movie was your first, and what character were you dressed up as at the time. Of the people in this room, which one is A wearing a spangly outfit and B not of use? For me, I cosplay as a chubby eight-year-old to Batman 1989. The whole family made the trip to see the new talking picture that would dominate that summer. Since then, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to both Bats and Iron Man. And clearly, I was not the only one. To date, films featuring Batman in a prominent role, sorry Suicide Squad, have grossed a total of $4.27 billion domestically and $8.65 billion across the globe. That's tossing in all the Batman flicks, the DCEU movies, the Lego features, and the animated flicks Mask of the Phantasm and The Killing Joke. All told, Batman averages $619 million worldwide every time he washes his tights. That's super impressive because more often than not, he's shouldering the load. That's not always the case with his combatant, Iron Man. This is why Superman works alone. Yes, Tony Stark does just fine on his own, thank you very much. But that MCU is a cash cow with golden udders. If we add up all the films that give Iron Man a meaty chunk of screen time, it equals $4.82 billion domestically and $12.9 billion worldwide. Wow! All that money and Kevin Feige still dresses like me going to the Sadie Hawkins dance. Iron Man relies heavily on his numerous Avenger pals to average $1.44 billion per movie worldwide, so that's no contest. But what if we look at the just Iron Man-led movies versus Batman-led movies? Let's take a look at the most celebrated trilogies in each Crime Fighters Blu-ray collection. The Dark Knight from Christopher Nolan and the first three Iron Man films from Jon Favreau and Shane Black. Christian Bale defeats Robert Downey Jr. here in both domestic and worldwide totals with The Dark Knight doing $3.16 billion worth of international business to Iron Man's $2.85 billion total. Iron Man is no doubt one of the, if not the most important part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. After all, without his first movie in 2008, we might not have the MCU, and instead we'd be arguing about which extraordinary gentleman is the most extra in the league. But he does have a ton of help. Captain America, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Black Widow, that kid who he met in Tennessee over Christmas. That's not to say Batman didn't get help, but his best assistance is arguably who he was going up against. I doubt Batman 1989 or The Dark Knight would have been the sensations they are without Jack and Heath, respectively. But when a universe needs a boost, Batman is the first number you call. Or you put up the signal. Instead of being patient and giving Superman a sequel, the DCEU just threw Batman in there instead. Look, he's in the title! See the movie. And the Lego movie saw he was so valuable, they gave him his own Lego movie. Iron Man is the richer billionaire at the box office, but per Pennyworth, no one hero is more valuable than the Cape Crusader. I mean, there's a reason he got that title. No kicks! Batman, you win round one, and you're up one nothing. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. Round two, tomato meter slash audience score. Wayne Enterprises has an early lead over Stark Industries, but the long-term success of any corporation is predicated upon making your customers happy. And although the ending of most Batman Iron Man films involves cities being decimated, we all usually walk out of the theater pretty satisfied. Audiences not only show up in droves to see these two fellows, they also rate them pretty high with the Rotten Tomatoes audience score. 
Iron Man has been a crowd pleaser ever since Black Sabbath wrote the song in the 70s. And it's, the movie came out in 2008, and it still ranks as the high mark for Tony Stark. That, The Avengers, and Avengers Endgame are all tied with a 91% audience score. Even better news is that the lowest rated Iron Man flick is Iron Man 2 at 71%. If you gave me a 71% on a trigonometry test, I'd say sold. Hello, Yale. Thanks for the pep talk, Pissant. The average audience score for all Iron Man centric cinema is 86%, which outpaces that bat guy considerably. Overall, Batman-y movies average a 71% audience score, which again equals Iron Man's all-time weakest film. Batman certainly has horsepower with moviegoers, as evidenced by both Batman Begins and The Dark Knight's score, but man, has that guy and his nipples made some bad movies. Batman and Robin, the low point for comic book movies and society in general, only nabbed 16% from audiences. Stay cool, bad boy. Batman Forever and The Killing Joke also weigh down Gotham's audience score. Critics, similarly, had plenty of venom towards the Val Kilmer, George Clooney era, as Batman Forever has a 39%, and Batman and Robin only mustered 11% on the tomato meter. But at least this also gives us an excuse to give props to some of the animated Batman endeavors. Mask of the Phantasm is a very fresh 84%, and the original Lego movie is the freshest of all Batman-related films at 96%. That's good enough to top anything Iron Man has done. Relax, everybody. I'm here. Batman! His highest output on the tomato meter is Iron Man and Avengers Endgame, both at 94%. For funsies, The Dark Knight, also 94%. Overall, Iron Man may have an on-again, off-again relationship with Pepper Potts, but the critics have always loved him. His movies average an impressive 86% on the tomato meter, while Batman and his many at-bats, <laughs> pun, average is still fresh 67.2%. I don't remember every beat of Iron Man 2, and I'm not going to defend the hill on which the Mandarin switcheroo lives, but I will say nothing in the MCU has ever been as close to stinky as the smattering of duds Batman has given us over the years. As the legendary Christmas tune goes, Robin laid an egg, and now Iron Man can claim his first victory in this match. Tony Stark takes the round, and we're tied at one apiece. I'm the best. Round three, competition. Ooh, what a fun round this is gonna be. Sure, when we say competition, we're referencing the villains that these two rich kids had to battle, but it doesn't end there. Batman and Iron Man are also competing against each other with all of their cool gadgets. Is a, uh, is a car a gadget? Yep. All right, game on. Chicks dig the car. As far back as 1966, Batman has been on the silver screen, giving all of us toys to be jealous of. From that classic Batmobile to the Batcopter and, of course, Shark Spray, Adam West's Batman gave all other Gotham Knights big boots to fill. Boots that would eventually be upgraded to ice skates. <laughs> Michael Keaton added the Batarang, Grapple Gun, and a cool car Siri feature shield. Then Kevin Conroy's animated Batman perfected the art of the smoke bomb. Christian Bale's bat tech became so advanced we could track every citizen in Gotham from their cell phone. And then Batfleck blessed us all with a suit designed to fight evil aliens. I don't care if that flying dude claims he's from Kansas, he's a Martian and he needs to be grounded. Regardless of your favorite Batman over the decades, we can all agree the car dude drives has always been legit. The convertible was street legal, the tumbler was utilitarian, and the Batman Returns one perfected a 360 turn that all but eliminated blind spots. Get those wonderful toys. However, while Alfred was putting the second coat of wax on his boss's main form of transportation, Iron Man's best vehicle was um, himself. Mostly derived from necessity, with a touch of ego, Tony Stark implanted tech inside himself. Ever since he was trapped in a cave, he learned that a marriage of body and technology is essential to fighting crime. When you have billions of dollars to spend, you can get multiple versions of everything. Get this, he has 50 different versions of the Iron Man suit. I'd be happy with one. Like, I'd even timeshare it with four of my friends. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Give me a suit, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, they're, they're only coded to me. What's that mean? Iron Man is no slouch when it comes to weapons and gadgets either. And no, I'm not talking about the Jericho missile. I might, however, be referencing the portable full-service bar that he totes around. Ask your liver if that thing's a weapon. 
He's also got the classic tank missile, complete with a cool walkaway. He must have practiced in the mirror. And Stark even invented a new element, appropriately called Badassium. You see, kids? Chemistry can be fun. Yes, science! But it all boils down to who are you going up against with all this awesome technology? Batman, hands down, has faced a better roster of villains than Iron Man, or at least they're more memorable. I like Obadiah Stane and Loki and Justin Hammer, but come on, does your grandpa know who they are? Unless your grandpa is Michael Douglas? But even my great-grandfather, who played pro ball for a few seasons with the White Sox, that's true, he knew about the Joker, the Riddler, Catwoman, Penguin, Bane. Maybe not Bane. Impossible. I don't know, but you get the idea. Batman should win this villain tussle easy, if not for the most feared purple antagonist of adults since Barney, Thanos shows up and it's a whole new ballgame. He could throw a moon at you! And with the snap of his fingers, he can wipe out half of existence. We needed every ounce of Tony Stark and company to defeat that guy, so that does score major points in my book. When it all comes down to it, we're comparing two different eras of crime fighter. Should Batman lose points because Morgan Freeman in a basement couldn't drum up a spider suit with nanotechnology? Perhaps, or maybe Bruce should gain points for developing his stuff decades before Tony Stark. If Iron Man went swimming and Bruce the Shark shows up, is he prepared to handle it? I, I don't know. Thanos posed the biggest threat humanity has ever seen, but after that it's a steep drop off to the next most threatening baddie. As a matter of fact, the second toughest opponent of Iron Man's career, it's probably Captain America. He's my friend. So was I. Batman also had to face down a fellow hero, and he had the game won against Superman. If only they both didn't have moms named after Martha Washington. Why did you say that name? Top to bottom, Batman had stiffer competition and had to go it alone more often than Iron Man. So even though Stark elevated superhero technology to new intergalactic heights, Batman wins the round for setting the precedent. I'll light up the bat signal because Vicky Vale's crush just went up two to one. Now it's time for the wild card round, Alter Ego. So we love us our crime fighters, whether they're battling in capes, metal suits, or hockey pads, but what about the man under the spandex? Bruce Wayne or Tony Stark? If the question is simply who would you rather hang with, it's an easy win for Tony. Guy's got a great place in Malibu, he freely gives out the address to anyone, and he's a party animal with kick-ass taste in music. Give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. <laughs> Bruce is a boring recluse who hangs with his butler, goes on a date once every decade, and only shows up to events to give the illusion that he's a fun playboy too. He basically has to act like Tony Stark just to throw Gotham's evil underbelly off his scent. Well, the guy dresses up like a bat clearly has issues. But Wayne does have qualities. He inherited a strong sense of community and philanthropy from his old man. And he also got a boatload of cash from him. Never leave the cave without him. And sweet Alfred. You may not see much of Bruce if you pop by Wayne Manor for a visit, but Alf, he's gonna make sure you're well fed, your glass is full, and if you play the right keys on the piano, you win a tour of the Bat Cave. And although Bruce wears his darkness more on his sleeve, both Richie Riches have tons of issues stemming from the untimely death of their parents. Tony Stark was a rebellious genius when his parents ate it, and although he was a fully grown boy by the time Bucky went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and off the rents, his last words to his father were regrettable. Meanwhile, Bruce never even got to have the talk with his dad. He was still running around in his The Phantom Underoos when Tommy and Martha made that fateful decision to go on Fandango and buy premium opera tickets. Remember folks, vote Mark Ellis for Employee of the Month. They both drift back to their last few interactions with their elders on a regular basis, and it fuels them with a passion to continue battling the worst scum the city or the galaxy has to offer. You have learned to bury your guilt with anger. I will teach you to confront it. But Tony Stark's parties are legendary. I'm giving him the alter ego round, not just because I want to hang with him and his cool friends. It's because he knows when to lead and when to take a back seat. Sometimes Iron Man has to fly first into the fight. In other instances, Captain America's job is to lead. Tony just has to pay for everything and make it look cool. Like the old man said, together. He owns his mistakes, like that time he tried to put a suit of armor around the world, and he learns from his troubled past. Bruce Wayne is a great, haunted, tortured individual. 
And as hard as he works to protect his home city, he doesn't play nearly as many away games as his marvelous counterpart. And again, watch the party scene from Age of Ultron and tell me that wouldn't be the best day of your life. Imagine how many Instagram likes you get. Hashtag blessed. Tony Stark wins the alter ego round and we're all tied up at two. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Never one to shrink from an honest challenge. Uh -huh. Which means I, Mark Ellis, employee of the month, now have to make the toughest decision of my versus career. While I consternate through these two gems one last time, I'll regale you with other hard choices that I've bravely made on this show. Star Wars prequels versus sequels, De Niro versus Pacino, Godzilla versus King Kong. Okay, I'll be honest, I knew Kong was my guy the whole time. But here it comes down to legacy. Batman's started long before Iron Man's, but Iron Man has since proven himself to be both a fearsome solo superhero and a valuable teammate. He uses his brain to further technology for the cause of justice, and he rightly defers when he's out of his Milky Way jurisdiction. Tony Stark learned from his past and became a great man. But Batman was never really about the person. It was the symbol that made him more than a considerable sum of his parts. All that money and ninjutsu and bat nipples couldn't equal the power of what the bat stood for. Long after Bruce sheds his mortal coil, Gotham will still be kept in check by the looming presence of the iconic Batman. Batman is my favorite hero of all time, and Batman Begins is my favorite comic book flick ever. So why am I giving Iron Man the win here? Shit. Shit. Because the only thing more powerful, memorable, and inspirational than a symbol of justice is when a hero sacrifices themselves for the cause. Tony Stark finally was at peace and had a loving family. He was content. He didn't pitch in with the time travel for ego, and he didn't take the snap amongst himself for the glory. It was the right thing to do. He gave his life for the betterment of humanity. And also that Hulkbuster suit, it, it's awesome. That's just my two pennies, and we're talking about two of the richest fellows in the entire universe, so now it's your turn. Dear viewer, vote with your pick in the comment section right now and cast your ballot with the same ferocity with which Batman yells the name of his dead girlfriend. Franco! Love you, Bats. You're still my boy, Blue. Is he gone? Sweet. All right. Time to gas up the Ford Fusion and see who wants to be my plus one to the Stark Expo. Happy American Cheeseburger. Get in my belly. Got these sunglasses for $9.